Welcome to Daily Success. Listen in on these personal conversations with today's leaders, innovators, and influencers as they discuss daily success principles, systems, and solutions. Get ready for daily success. Now, here's your host. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to be part of the Champions Mentoring for a Change book project that will benefit memoriesinamansion.org. And today I am going to be speaking with Adam Bricker about his participation in the Champions Book Project and Diana Alde Regia. And first, I want to ask Diana to tell me a little bit more about the Champion Book Project and Memories in a Mansion. So Diana, um, tell us more. Absolutely. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you very much. Memories in a Mansion is a leadership, a global leadership academy impacting 10 million plus women all around the world. We are, we, we're an in-house extended program where they work on personal development on public speaking skills, business skills, uh, self-love, self-care, hygiene. They, they, they regain their power by knowledge, learning how to function sufficiently, uh, self-sufficiently in the world. We're, we're helping young women aging out of foster care, victims of trafficking, and domestic violence. We're giving them... Some people ask, why a mansion? Why does it have to be a luxury venue? It doesn't have to be, but they're used to traveling around with plastic bag with all their belongings. They have no place, no home. Um, they never, they've never had the audacity, I guess, to think they belong in a place like that. I want them to create a new norm that they belong anywhere, that their voice matters and they can make anything they want happen in their lives. I want it to be a new norm. So tell me more about the Champions Book Project. How did that come about? Champions Mentoring Creates Change is a book of people overcoming their challenges. It's a compilation of a phenomenal group of people all in our network. You're one of them. Adam is, 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 is also in the book. It's how they overcame challenges. We all have them. Um, none of us is free and clear. If not, we don't grow. That's how we, we, we go from one part of our lives into the next by crossing all these obstacles, all these challenges and learning. That's, that's what the book is about and teaching these young women that no matter where you are in your, in your life, there's a possibility of achieving anything that you want. Well, that's really great. And I, and I really think that, um, the Champions Book Project and the Memories in a Mansion, it's such a needed thing in the world to have people out there who share the light and the hope and to mentor people and give people a hand up. And I've had the pleasure of knowing both of you for for a couple years. And Adam Bricker, I actually met him um, at a program called Essence of Being. And it's interesting how we've all continued on this journey of growth in the last couple of years. But before I ask Adam these questions, let me tell you a little bit more about him. Adam Bricker is a forward thinking and innovative fitness philosopher. His ability to see what others miss allows for the creation of plans and strategies specifically designed to overcome obstacles that have previously prevented his clients from successfully attaining their goals. Focused in the business world, his high-impact solutions have helped manufacturers, corporations, franchisers, schools, and associations across the globe reach their goals to increase revenue, attract more clients, and improve public support. So that's just a tiny, tiny fraction of who Adam Bricker is. And Adam, you actually wrote a chapter in the Champions books. Can you tell me more about that uh, chapter? And it's about the power of habit. So welcome. Welcome. 
Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate um, that great introduction. I'm happy to be here and so happy to support uh, this champion's effort. And, and just like Diana was saying before, I, I'm all about creating new norms. And as a philosopher, the fitness philosopher, what I do is I help people think differently. And unfortunately, um, a lot of education it, that doesn't teach children how to think. It teaches them what to think. It tells them where to stand in line. It, it, it tells them what to do. And then when they're faced with making decisions as adults, they don't have that that uh, foundation of thinking of decision making that's um, that, that that things are built on. And, and you mentioned EOB, and that's where we met. And 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 a lot of these discoveries came through processes like that. Um, most people don't know what a habit is. They think they know what a habit is, but they don't know what a habit is. And the habit is truly a. I'm sorry, I'm just hearing feedback through your, your mic. A habit is not what you do again and again and again, getting the same results. People think a habit's what you do to what, what you do again and again and get the same results. Um, I would like people to have an open mind and just consider for a second that what you do again and again is a result of your habit. Your habit is actually the way you think. And what's programmed into your mind, which which produces that physical action. So the habit is what you think and what you believe. And through the process of getting people to shift from the physical to the mental, they can understand that their beliefs drive their actions. This is why if somebody loses weight, they gain it all back. They lose weight, they gain it all back. And I work with people, especially when they get to that point where they're at 25 to 30 pounds down and they want to do another 20 or 25, they get stuck. And there's the, if they don't change their mindset right at that moment, they'll gain all the weight back. Okay, So that's where the habits come into play. And I, if you take somebody out of their environment and put them in an incredible environment like a mansion and give them a few benefits of, of life that they're not used to having, and while they're there, you teach them how to shift their mind, how to recreate what habits are, then you empower them to change when they walk out that door. That really is a phenomenal concept. And I think you're absolutely right about habits because uh, everyone I know who's ever been on any type of a change journey, there is a point where you either, especially with weight, it, you you're doing really, really well. And then all of a sudden something happens and you either stop and plateau and you start gaining again. I mean, I've done it and I'm, I know lots of other people have done it. And of course the goal is still a long ways away. And I've even watched the uh, 600 pound weight loss show. And I was watching these people and it always when they get stuck, the doctor always sends them to a counselor or a psychologist because it's in their head. And it really makes a lot of sense that if you work on your mind first, that everything else will fall into place. And with that, tell me more about the concept of alignment. It is, it is all about alignment. All it is is alignment. Okay, and it's the alignment between what you believe, which is usually your subconscious beliefs, and what you do in the physical world. So, what really is your habit, and what people perceive as being their habit? Okay, um, I can I can best use this example with smoking, um, smoking cigarettes. It's real simple because it's black and white. You either smoke or you don't smoke, or you're kind of playing in the middle a little bit. So. Um, if you don't smoke cigarettes, you believe you don't smoke cigarettes. I'm not a smoker. And physically, you don't smoke cigarettes. It's a match. You're in alignment. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Conversely, if you believe you're a smoker and you smoke, so if your mental process is, I'm a smoker, and your, and your physical action is you smoke, you too are in alignment. It's when a person decides they want to go out of alignment and not smoke. 
So they change the physical aspect without changing the mental aspect. So here they're a smoker, but I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to not smoke. So now they're out of alignment. I believe I smoke, but I'm not smoking. It causes stress, anxiety, trauma, and it takes something called willpower. If you're familiar with the term willpower, I'm going to give you a real simple explanation of what that is. That is acting out of alignment, deliberately acting out of alignment. I believe I'm a smoker, but I'm not going to smoke. I believe I love donuts, but I'm not going to eat donuts. I believe I drink beer, but I'm not going to drink a beer. Okay? So you're acting out of alignment. It takes willpower. It will not last. It can last a day, a week, a month, sometimes years, but it, it can't last because we can't live out of alignment. One of my favorite teachers is Tony Robbins, and, and Tony taught me that people will violate their values to stay in alignment. Okay? So you're a smoker. You're not smoking. Something's going to give. You're going to go back to smoking. You lost weight. You're going to gain the weight back unless you change your belief. And as a philosopher, one of the most important things that we can do to change our life in any kind of transformation we're going through is to unlearn what we were taught, is to unlearn what we picked up. You know, you ever hear the term picked up bad, bad habits? What that really means, since a habit is a thought, <clears throat> is you learned a thought pattern from somebody else, your teacher, your coach, your parent, the media, something emotional in your life, program something in your brain, and for you to unlearn it is the magical skill. Once you unlearn that you're a smoker, you don't, you don't smoke, okay? You don't need willpower. Um, do either of you ladies smoke? I used to smoke, but I haven't smoked since the 90s, so 20-some years. It's been okay. How much willpower does it take you not to smoke on a daily basis? I, I don't even think about it anymore. Um, so. Yeah. So you are now in alignment. You move your belief forward, and now you don't smoke, and you believe you don't smoke. That's alignment. When people lose 25 pounds, what happens is they look in the mirror. They're not in alignment with their self-image. That is not me. That's, uh, that's subconscious. That's not me. You walk around, and people go, wow, did you lose weight? Did you change? Did you... You know, what are you doing? And they, they say, you look great. And I bet you're getting a lot of that right now. Okay. <laughs> that, that puts people in a position that makes them out of alignment because they spent so much time going, oh, I'm too heavy. I'm too fat. I'm too this. I'm too that. And, and, and that's how they program their mind. And so here they are walking around accomplishing this great goal of losing weight and feeling great. but are out of alignment, okay? If you promise yourself you weren't going to smoke and you promise yourself you um, are going to eat a donut and then you go back and you do, you know what that's called? Self-sabotage. Ah. Are you familiar with this term, self-sabotage? Yeah. People are, but they don't really know what it means. What it means is you're acting in alignment with your subconscious, but you don't want to. You are acting in alignment with subconscious, but you don't want to. So if you're ever in the spot where you don't want to do things, but you find yourself doing them, especially if it's a pattern again and again and again, right then, right there, that's your magic spot. What would you have to believe to keep doing that pattern? I don't want to smoke, but I am. That means there's a subconscious thought in there that's driving that activity. And that's what I do as the fitness philosopher is I help people find that habit, find that thought pattern and change it. If you could change the thought pattern to I need to lose weight because if you've, if you've been overweight, you've been trying to do, lose weight for 10, 20, 30 years, and you've developed a habit of being overweight. Losing weight, getting fit gets you out of alignment. The second that you change your alignment to, I'm fit, happy, and healthy, everything in the universe will conspire to have you fit, happy, and healthy. Wow, that, that's pretty phenomenal. So you do work with people on, on changing the way they think about things as the fitness philosopher. So you, you mentioned weight, and 
so when you're thinking about weight, the big question is what weight are you supposed to really be losing? <laughs> and that's great. Uh, this is my number one tool as the, as the fitness philosopher, because I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. People don't understand what weight there is to lose. So they're programmed in this pattern of thought belief. They're programmed in this pattern of, um, of uselessness, of, of drivel. Um, there's a lot of people in America that will walk around and say, hi, how you doing? Without any care in the world of how you're doing. So the same thing with, I want to lose weight. There's only a few things that compose weight in your body. There's bones, there's muscles, there's fat, there's water. Okay. There's not that much more. So what do you want to do? Do you want to lose weight in your bones? No. No. No, people do. We've witnessed people lose weight in their bones, and they start bending over, and they they look frail. Okay, we want to be strong. Do we want to lose weight in our muscles? No, no. probably not. Everybody knows muscle weighs more than weight. I'm sorry, muscle weighs more than fat. Okay, so some of these tricky weight loss programs work you out in a way that destroys your muscles. They guarantee you're going to lose weight on the scale, and you do. It's just you're not going from fat to fit. You're going from fat to flabby. I think it's a horrible thing in this country, and some companies should be shut down. However, we're not going to mention their names on this call. Okay? <laughs> it's a strategy. So if you want to lose weight, you can go. You can you can eat and exercise in a way that will, way that'll shred your muscles, and your scale will go down, which is living proof that losing weight isn't isn't the answer. Okay. Now, um, the thing in the body that most people want to lose is fat. Fat. Okay. And, and losing weight is a, is a bad thing in the mind because it hits your targets and your emotions and the things we've been talking about. People try to replace it with releasing weight or some other kind of thing like that. And, And it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, really what you have to understand what fat is. Fat is simple. It's a biological tool. It's stored energy. It's the energy from the food you already ate. It's in your body. It's waiting for you to use it. Okay. If you put gas in a car, how is that fuel released? It's burned. Okay. And it has that, you know, you the carbon dioxide comes out the back. If you put wood on a fire, it's burned. So what do you do to use the fuel that's in your body? The fat. You burn the fat for fuel. Okay. And there's certain ways to do it. And, you know, there's certain diets that are specifically designed to leverage the fat for energy. Okay. So you get more energetic. You get more muscle. You burn off your fat. So you get leaner, thinner, and stronger. It's just the best way to do it. But if you just want to lose weight. Oh, by the way, I could work with somebody. Um, especially women, they can be two sizes smaller. Their energy can be through the roof and they can be leaner and curvier and look like they've lost 20 to 30 pounds, but really on the scale, they've lost five. So that's a mindset that they have to be prepared for. It's not about losing weight. It's about taking control of your body and your mind and creating what you desire. Wow, that's a phenomenal uh, thing to look forward to. You also talk a lot about a concept, um, ready, set, go. What does that mean? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's the way we do the work. Um, ready. People, I'm ready to lose weight. Okay, I'm ready to lose, which pretty much means I'm tired of getting fatter. I'm frustrated with myself. I'm set up. I'm fed up. I'm ready to lose weight. So when they're ready to lose weight, what do they do? They take action. They join a gym. They start a diet. They take action at ready. Bad philosophy. So if you were watching a running race or participating, I don't know if you guys are runners. And no. Okay. So we're watching the race. We're watching the Olympics. Okay. And and the runners come up to the starting line, and the starter yells, ready! If they start running, what happens? 
they're off mark. They're they, they normally did. fall over. No, they get disqualified, right? Yeah, or- they're disqualified. They the race stops. They're disqualified now. In some of the races, they'll give them a second chance. You do that twice, and you're out. Okay, but they literally stop the race to start again. So if you are starting a diet and you're ready and you you move on ready, you you go too soon. You burn out. And you don't have everything set up. Now, get set. So the 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 way it goes in the race is ready, set, go. So people hire me as the fitness philosopher when they're ready to lose weight. But then we take time to get set. Okay. Now, how do we get set? Do we, do we figure out what the right exercise plan is? Yes, of course. Do we figure out what the right diet is? Yes, of course. But we get set in the mind. We understand how you respond to success, how you respond to failure. Okay. What's the number one thing that shuts down a diet when people start when they're ready? Success. Success. Oh, I need to lose 50 pounds. I'm tired of this. I'm going to start on a diet. I just can't. I don't fit my old clothes. I got to lose weight. So they start on a diet. Okay. They lose five pounds. They lose 10 pounds. And if they stick with it, they lose 20 pounds. Now they start fitting into their old clothes. Now they start feeling better about themselves. They don't have that desperation of being 50 pounds overweight because they look better than they have in a while. They're trending in the right direction. So what do they do? They loosen up the reins. They loosen the pressure and they loosen up the reins. They're not set. They're not prepared for that level of success, that middle level. Okay. So what do they do? They slack off a little bit. They, they let a little thing in. They, they, they let go of their willpower a little bit. And guess what happens next? They keep losing weight because they have momentum. Okay, So their body metabolism has sped up. And so they do that again and again and again. All of a sudden, they're gaining weight back. Success is the number one thing that shuts down the beginning of a diet program. So I teach people how to get set, how to have the right things in the, in, in the cupboard. If you say, I am not going to eat donuts, I am not going to eat donuts, I am not going to eat donuts, guess what shows up in your life? Donuts. Donuts. The opportunity <laughs> to say no to donuts. Um, if you say, God, please give me patience, does God go, here's patience? No. You get opportunity to demonstrate patience. Okay. And so if you say, I'm not going to drink beer, I'm not going to drink beer, I'm not going to drink beer. Guess what? What shows up? Opportunities to drink beer. You know, a uh, quick little example. I decided to cut beer out of my life when I was in my original weight loss process that was successful. And I saw it all the way through. Not going to drink beer, not going to drink beer, not going to drink beer. Go to a sushi restaurant, small little place, only had about 12 tables in it. My date and I are sitting down at the table having a wonderful time. Party of six comes in. The only two tables left are on both sides of me. Would you guys mind moving over to one table? Yeah, we'll move over. Sure. Okay. They put sit down. They're all having fun. They get their drinks, and all of a sudden, a beer is put on my table. Hey, that's from us. Thanks for moving over. It shows up. Your resistance to it, your preparation, your being set is wonderful. It's, that's the key. And once you're set, that's when you go. And for me, it usually takes two to three weeks to get somebody set. And when they go, they, they, they push through all the, all the plateaus because they're prepared for that. And that is ready, set, go. Wow. That's, it, it is a lot bigger process than I think most people realize. And weight is such is such a good example because we all have to eat. You know, smoking is something that, you know, you can live without smoking, but you have to eat <laughs> to, to, to live. So it's a whole nother dynamic. And I think you're absolutely right about that concept of success. Actually, you know, oh, I'm successful. And then you let a little thing go in and or some stressful thing happens and and it's almost like oh you know it's you revert back into something oh that's really a phenomenal um 
conversation. I, I, I could talk about this all day long because it is a personal interest. So if somebody wants to talk with you and connect with you, what's the best way to do that, Adam? So for me, I use a really simple piece of modern technology. It's called the easy card. And um, if you were to pull out your cell phone and text the word fitness to 64600, it would download my card. If you want to go there the old way, it's easycard.com slash fitness. But just sending that word fitness to 64600 gets you into my online portal and you can see everything fitness philosopher. Wow, that's really phenomenal. And, and I love technology because just like our conversation today where we're able to have, you know, three of us on this call at one time and record it and have the video and then you've got the great um, easycard.com forward slash fitness and or you can text it and make sure uh, that you send me that and I'll make sure that that is in the show notes so people can easily contact you. So Diana, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about memories in a mansion and I understand that you have a big event coming up also. Yes, we do, yes we do. But I wanted to reiterate something Adam said that has worked for me and may work for someone else. What does it take to, and whatever it is that follows in the, you know, the situation that you're in that has worked for me on numerous occasions. And I thank you, Adam, for that trick, for that uh, tool. It's not a trick. It's a tool. You are welcome. Yes. And the, uh, we are having an event. We're having an event August 1st. It's a book launch fundraiser and letting the world know that Memories in a Mansion is ready to go. Um, it's August 1st from 7 to 10 at Villa Woodbine with Chef Bill Hansen catering the food. And we're super excited. We can't wait. It, it's, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> so how can people find out more about Memories in a Mansion? They can go to the Facebook page. Memories in a Mansion, TM as in trademark, and they can find the events there. They can also go to memoriesinamansion.org, and they can also email me at diana, D-I-A-N-A, at memoriesinamansion.org, and I'd be happy to have a conversation. Well, great. Memoriesinamansion.org on Facebook, Memories in a Mansion TM for trademark. And I think that just sounds like a fabulous opportunity to find out more and also the book signing. And it sounds like a fabulous event coming up on August 1st. So Adam, before I let you go, do you have any um, last comments you wanted to share with everyone? Uh, absolutely, and, and I, I thank you for this platform. I want to let you know that um, you mentioned technology. Um, the power of habits is an ancient technology. It's what humans are uh, built with, and it makes life easier when we want to. Um, the problem is we're not taught how to use habits. So if you, um, if you want to take a moment to understand that the power of habits, making things easier, putting parts of your life on autopilot, when you do them deliberately and they give you the results you want, we call those good habits. Anything you call a bad habit that's, that, that you want to break, that's something that's probably programmed in from somebody else. And once you take ownership of it, you can get rid of it and change it easily. So you need to take control of your own habits so that you can uh, change them if you want to change them or add good habits. And so it all starts up here in your, in your mind. I think that's the, my big takeaway is it's not necessarily about what's going on in the rest of your body because it's all up here first. And then the, the your body follows with that. You, you, abs uh, you absolutely nailed it. The mind is the cause, what happens in the physical world, that's the effect. Wow. 
So I think I think that your chapter in the book, The Power of Habits, is going to be one of those ones, a must-read chapter. But every every single interview that we've done so far, I mean, they're the people are so phenomenal and the messages and their missions are so big and great. So Diana, uh, congratulations on, you know, bringing all of these people together in support of memories in a mansion. Uh, Do you have any last thing that you'd like to add? Yes, Tammy. Thank you. And women, women are half or approximately half the population, the world's population. And they're not taken care of and we don't take care of ourselves. Imagine if we help one woman, one woman, and it changes her life, her children's life and the family she has. We improve societies and communities. What do you think that impact will have in the world if we multiply that? Wow. It would be enormous and it would benefit us all. Yes, absolutely. And memoriesinamansion.org. Everyone go check it out. Adam Bricker, thank you so much uh, for sharing the fitness philosopher concepts about good habits. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you, Diana. You're welcome, Tammy. Thank you. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to Daily Success. Tune in again and subscribe. Never miss a moment of daily success.